Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Rob tries to detail a car in sub-zero temperatures. Before we get into the detail, I just want to do a quick rundown on a few things I did on the car off camera. So I decided to do the maintenance stuff off camera because it's not that exciting to film or watch, I'd imagine. So I just want to catch you guys up to where we're at. Under the hood, we installed brand new spark plugs. Uh, I'll throw a picture of them here, but they were definitely due. Uh, we also threw a brand new air filter in it. And I put an insulated boot over the positive terminal, so that is now insulated. I also rebled the brakes, did a better job this time, and now the pedal feels great. It's nice and firm and consistent. It doesn't do the soft first push and then hard second push, so. Brakes are 100%. The other thing I may not have mentioned on camera was I installed the rear e-brake spring, so the e-brake is also functioning 100%. In the front suspension, the shock boots or bellows were very torn. I'll throw a picture of those up here. They were super rotten, which is very, very common on 8th gens, I think. I don't know, 98.6% of the 8th gens I've owned have had torn shock boots, so I replaced both of those. I didn't like the bump stops that came with, so I left the OEM bump stops in there. You'll see the car now has a front license plate bracket. In my province, it's required we have a front plate. Where this car came from, it did not. So I ordered that new from Honda, as well as all new screws, hardware clips, etc. I also undercoated the back half of the car with lanolin wax. It had a little bit of surface corrosion in a few spots, so that lanolin will protect it from continuing to rust, and it'll protect it for winter driving. Keep the elements off there, keep the car in the current condition it's in. As long as someone re it once a year, the car will never rust again. I installed brand new wiper blades. In the interior, all I did was switch out that shift boot. This one's in a little nicer shape than the old one. I got that one from the junkyard video, which you guys would have seen last. Uh, the only other thing we did inside was put a brand new cabin air filter in. Also removed the rear amplifier from the trunk. I just tucked the wiring under the back seat because I wasn't about to pull up the carpet just to take five feet of wiring out. So wiring's all disconnected, but just tucked under the back seat. Amplifier's gone. Okay, there's one other thing I need to deal with mechanically on the car. I will not be doing that in this video, but I want to mention it because it is important. The car does have an oil leak. Uh, it's in kind of an awful spot, if I'm being honest. Uh, on R series and K series engines, they don't use gaskets for like the oil pan or any of that. And they have like a separate block girdle. And in between all of those surfaces, it's just machine surfaces with uh, Honda Bond, which is just Honda's kick ass RTV. So. It has in maybe about an inch sized area on the back of the block between the girdle and the block it has a small weep and it's weeping out of there and then it's running down the side of the tranny and dripping. Now I don't want to sell a car with an oil leak but at the same time to fix that properly I basically need to remove the engine Put the engine on the stand, put it upside down, take the oil pan off, take the girdle off, clean it all, re Honda bond it, and then put it all together. So it's a pretty big undertaking. I know I just made it sound speedy, but it is quite the undertaking, right? Um, a friend of mine said he's had success with cleaning the outside of that surface and RTVing the seam from the outside. I'll put a picture of it here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But he said he's had success with RTVing just the little outside bit, so I might give that a try because it is easy. And if it doesn't fix it, I think I will pull the motor and fix it properly. Like I said, I um, reputation is important to me, so I don't want to sell someone a car with an oil leak. Even if I disclose it, which I would, people have differing opinions on what's a weep, what's a leak, etc. And I would just hate for there to be some type of animosity because they don't think I described it to them well enough or something, right? So, anyways, enough of my jabbering. I am going to sort that oil leak out. I'll keep you guys updated on it. 
And let's do what you're here for, which is let's detail this car. Let's get it out in the sun where it's maybe one degree warmer. And the first thing we're gonna do is hit this thing with an iron remover and try and get all the fallout off the car. And then we'll probably move on to clay bar. Okay, the paint has all these little tree shits everywhere on the roof too. Uh, I'm gonna hit that with, oop, I'm gonna hit that with some rubbing alcohol and a cloth. Hey, Toner. Hey, buddy. Um, get all those pieces off, hopefully, and then uh, we'll start the clay barring process. All right, three months and 27 days later. I've got most of it off the trunk. Has stained in a few spots, but clay bar might fix that. I tried using butter wax, I tried using rubbing compound, and I tried using razor blade. Pretty much took a combination of all three. I still gotta do the roof, and one spot on the bumper. I think that's it, and that's what I'm, I'm calling it as that's it, because uh, there's a couple on the side. I guess I'll try and remove two. Remember how I said I hate detailing interiors? I think I hate removing tree sap more. There's definitely something intimidating about using a razor blade on your paint, but that seemed to be the most effective method. So, let's play Bart. This is with no polish or anything. This is just after the clay bar and the wash, and it's looking way better.
Okay guys, she's back in the shop as you can see. And it's crazy what just the decon and clay bar did for this car. It looks so much better. But next on the list before we polish it, um, we gotta go around and we gotta fix all the rock chips. And there's about 346 of them. I counted every one. No, I didn't. But what I want to do is go around and I'll take like a pick like this and I will scratch out any of the rust or just gunk whatever's in there. I'll go around and I'll scratch out each chip like that so I have a nice clean surface. And then on bigger ones like this one here where we've got a couple little bubbles forming and the one on the back fender here that's bigger than that you know we got a four inch area there that needs to be cleaned up um i'm gonna take metal prep from por this is like a metal etching rust remover it actually chemically reacts with the metal and it pulls that shit out of there so we will soak both of those areas probably with a brush and this and then I'll probably even hit those areas with some self edge primer I've got up there somewhere, which is primer that's designed to go over bare metal. And then we'll fill them with paint. So I'm gonna give you guys a real quick walk around tour of the worst areas so that I can show you what it looks like afterwards. And then I'm just gonna get into it and I'll show you guys the results. So the fenders, quite bad as you come up to the front you can see quite a few rock chips hood obviously doesn't have any it's freshly painted this fender same story the bumper's got lots of little black marks like that and that some there more along this side uh, i just showed you that bubble in the fender we're going to fix and then your typical rock chips down towards the mud flap and then right here, there's a few, I don't even know if these are rock chips or just the paint's a little thin there because it's still primer under them, which is interesting. But nonetheless, we've got to fill those. Uh, there's a couple on the roof, but not many, probably five or so. Coming around the back, it's all pretty great. Got one there. Obviously, we've got to fix that spot, which I already showed you guys. This side of the car is pretty good. And then just your typical lower fender near the mud flap area. I'm gonna fix those up, so. That's the gist of it. Quick update, uh, there was a bubble back here I didn't show you guys, it was obviously about yay big. I scraped the bubble off so we get down to the metal. Scraped it clean and I just put some of that self etching stuff on it. You can see here, this has been self etching the longest and it's already looking like bare metal, so that's pretty awesome. And this is coming up a lot cleaner too from the etching, so. Gonna keep working on her and and yeah, band of the day. Slaughter to prevail. All right, I wanted to give you guys a quick explanation. So you look at this side, it's all nice and clean. It just had the one little bubble there, which I chipped away. And when you look at this side, there's quite a bit of paint missing. And there was surface rust from here to here. So what actually happened there was there was a few bubbles. You can see that's a deeper pit and that's a deeper pit. And maybe right there was a deep one too. And the previous owner ground the paint off because he was going to clean that up and then he never did anything with it. So it just sat there and that's how it got the surface rust. But I cleaned it off now with the self etch and it's looking quite good. So that's ready to be 
coated. I've gone through and I've scraped the majority of the rock chips and cleaned them with isopropyl. So now it's time to start putting paint in them. Alright, I got some primer here and a little paintbrush. Alright, I think we got a pretty good healthy coating of primer on there. So we'll have to let that dry and then we'll put some taffeta white on it. Anyways, I'm gonna keep on keep it on. Okay, I also got some Tafata White here. And I'm gonna use the little brush. I'm gonna use a little brush on the Tafata White to fix up some of the bigger black marks on the bumper. chicken pot pie break but well I've got pretty much all the chips filled to the extent I'm going to the only one I would like to put more paint in is the back quarter uh, it's just it's kind of an awkward spot to add paint so I'm kind of doing as much as I can but you can see it's looking way better than it did so making good progress there but uh, the rest of them are pretty good, so I'll give you guys a quick walk around, and then we're almost to the stage of polishing it. So. Look how much better that fender looks without all the chips into the hood. Looks great. And then down here on the bumper, there was a few black spots there we fixed. The spots that were all little primer ones right here. See them look beauty now. Also did along the uh, back edge of the door, which I don't think I actually showed you guys, but I did that. And then our fix up here. Yeah. What a difference. Uh, that's why I love white. Like, yeah, in person in the sunlight, you can see the texture of the rock chips being filled. But the second you stand back a couple feet, like on most cars, you stand back a few feet and you can see all the rock chip repairs clearly. But on this thing, or on white, sorry. You don't, it just looks awesome. They just really disappear, so. It's a nice color to work with. That's how she's looking. Catch up with you guys when it's time for polishing. Uh, one more thing I noticed while I was walking around eating my pie, drinking this thing up, is it's got these old dealership logos on the trunk. Uh, I don't like those, so I'm going to take the heat gun and remove those. Then we'll polish it. You can see there's a lot of grime around the Civic logo and remedy that and we also got to kind of get rid of the outlines from those stickers. That looks way better. Let's deal with these blue paint transfer marks on this cord panel. Can use some rubbing alcohol and a chamois and go to town. There's a little bit on this door here too. JK guys, that's not doing the trick. You know, you normally, I didn't try very long, but like you'd notice pretty quick if it's working. 
and that wasn't working. So we'll try and take that off with the polish at the polishing stage. All right, I'm awful at polishing, but I'm not really, I mean, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm not really getting results with what I'm doing. I'm not very happy with it. So I might try some type of different compounds or something. I don't know. I'll go around it with something else and see what I can do. But you guys get the idea. I'm going to dance around the car with a polisher for a while. So I'll catch up with you guys in a bit if I can figure out a better way to do this. Okay, I've switched up to a, I don't know, Chemical Guys V36. This is the coarsest one I have. It's like good for a thousand to fifteen hundred grit scratches. I can't reiterate enough how bad I am at this, but I got rid of all the blue that was in here. That's all gone, so that's a win. Um. There was some red paint transfer up here on the front bumper. I was able to get rid of that. My next task I'm going to try, there's a scratch. Hopefully the camera picks it up. There's one running across here and then down. I'm going to try to get that one next. And there's a pretty good scuff back here on the back bumper. I'm going to work on that too. All that stuff I can seem to do, no problem, but... What I can't do is get like the swirly hazy marks out. I'm just, I don't know if it's, I'm using the wrong stuff or I just don't know what I'm doing. Like I got the wing better than it was, but there's still, you can still see like swirly marks and same with the trunk. So again, it's white, so it still looks okay. But like if this was a black car, I would just be making a mess of things probably. Anyway. I'm gonna try and do those couple areas and we'll see how it turns out. Those both came out pretty nice actually. The scratch. Yeah, I can't even find it now. It's gone. So that's good. And this. Also, all the transfer came off. There's still, there's just a little bit of spider pack cracking and chips in the paint just from whatever hit it. But the scuff is gone, so. That type of stuff is turning out good. But, I don't know. I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm gonna just keep attacking it with this polisher till I feel like I got the whole car done. I'm kind of been jumping around a little bit right now doing the bad spots, but. Yeah, I'm gonna try and get the whole car done so that we can uh, get to ceramic coating. All right, the car is completely polished in one stage. For guys who do more than one stage, two, three, what have you, your effort is commendable because I can never do more than one. Goodness, do I hate that. And I'm not very good at it. But, knowing that, here's the result. The car looks great, in my opinion. You gotta remember, this was an abandoned Civic, parked up for three years. When I got it, it had moss growing on it, it had mold, covered in tree sap. This is a week's worth of work. And, well, not the detailing, but the entire car has been a, a week's worth of work, and it's Coming out fantastic. I got basically all the big scratches out. There's definitely still some haze marks and stuff in the paint, but I'm not experienced enough to do that. Did the taillights, they came out really nice. I must have practiced on the trunk two or three times. The wing used to be really scuffed along the middle and you can still see some of it, but way cleaner looking. All the blue paint came off of this side, the door handle. Uh, there was a bunch of tra paint transfer on this fender that came off and a bunch on the bumper as well. 
So yeah, I am very happy with it. I did do one stage on the hood as well, which seemed to knock down my orange peel just slightly. Uh, I'm too scared to wet sand it. I'm just not talented enough. So I just stuck with the one polish. The orange peel isn't exact match to factory, but honestly, it's really good in my opinion. Anyways, for my skill level, quite happy with it. So I think it's time we ceramic coat it. Uh, this will be my first time ceramic coating. I've got the uh, bottle out here. It's 10H Nano Ceramic Coating by Magic Shield. This was the cheapest one on Amazon. It was about $50 Canadian. Comes with 50 mils of the coating. Applicator pads, some gloves, a cloth. I don't know. I've never done this before. I'm going to read the instructions one more time so I'm familiar with it. And then I'm just going to knock it out. I don't think I'm going to film it. There's not much to see. You're just... Wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. So, I'm gonna try, I don't know, maybe I'll start on the trunk first, seems to be my favorite spot. Um, and then I will let you guys know how it looks when it's done, if it looks any different. Hopefully it adds a little bit of gloss, and most importantly, it's gonna add a good amount of protection. Again, whoever buys this is most likely gonna daily the thing, so. This should keep it looking fresh. Uh, the other thing I'll show you guys quick is this little zone. I haven't spent any time polishing right here or or our ceramic coating. Obviously not yet, but I'm not going to. Uh, this paint is probably still curing a bit, but you can see it looks pretty darn good. There's definitely some texture there, but it's a lot better than it was, and at least it's protected. Uh, over the next few days, I might still add a few more layers to that to really try and seal it in anyway enough jibber jabber i'm gonna ceramic coat this thing and you guys will see the results now bam ceramic coated so that was an interesting process that took me roughly an hour uh, i used that entire 50 mil bottle i did all the major areas of the car first i did the bumpers last because they're kind of the rougher areas and then with the little teeny bit I had left I kind of covered all the trim so show it to you guys I don't know how the gloss will come across on camera but it definitely is shinier than it was um, it's not anything mind-blowing but there's definitely more gloss on the car I don't know if that will change as it cures and levels it says it takes says at least 24 hours and then maybe two or three more days of finalizing so did all the tail lights obviously did the headlights but yeah I, I don't know I think it it looks pretty dang glossy I'm happy with it the one thing I will say I wasn't stoked on was the little applicator mitt it was like this black kind of fiber and it didn't react well to my chip repair on the front fenders so my chips are a little more noticeable now you can kind of see they're kind of dark looking they weren't really like that before the ceramic coat and i think it was from the applicator but what can you do again we're not shooting for perfect we're just trying to restore what we had with as little money invested as possible and I'm really impressed this car is looking great so sorry if I didn't film all the polishing and the ceramic coating like I said I'm not really a detailer so polishing is not my forte and this was the first time I ever used ceramic coat uh, if you guys are interested I'm definitely going to try it again and I would be willing to film it if someone wants to see it but I'm no expert so it's basically that stuff anyways. I know some stuff is different to use, I've been told, but that stuff was no harder than applying a coat of wax. You just put it on the pad, wipe it across the panel, get it completely covered, get a nice level, even coverage, let it flash for, I was letting mine flash for about three minutes. And then I would do the two cloth method, knock down the heavy stuff with one cloth and then give it a buff with another. So like I said, not much harder than putting wax on a car but it should be a lot stronger and i think it adds more gloss than wax so i think that's going to be it for this video though guys um 
it's getting late. It's almost 11 o'clock at night. I've probably spent well, at least eight, maybe nine hours detailing this thing today. So she's definitely coming along. But anyways, like I said, that's it for this video. So again, if you guys enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. It's free. You just got to click the button. Helps me out. Helps me out if you like the video too. So we'll catch you in the next one. Or I don't know what we'll be doing, but I'm sure it'll involve an 8th Gen Civic. So, see you then. Peace out.